Well, does God exist? I suppose you're going to get a variety of different answers depending on who you ask. And there's really, this is one of many videos that you're going to find on YouTube. But I want to answer this by turning to the Bible, specifically Genesis chapter 1. You see, not only does the Bible insist that there is a God, but I want to share three lessons about him. So here then is a brief introduction to the God of the Bible. Here's the first lesson. God is self-existent. Genesis 1.1 reads, In the beginning, God. So notice that God's existence is taken for granted here. So at the very start of everything, God was already there. You see, the Bible doesn't begin with, with a long set of proofs of God's existence. It simply says, In the beginning, God. Here then is a, a self-existent God. Who made God? Children like to ask that question. And the answer is no one. He is eternal. Whatever begins to exist has a cause. But if something exists eternally, if it never actually comes into being, then it doesn't need a cause. This, in fact, is what some atheists actually think about the universe. Some atheists say that the universe itself is eternal. But you see, our Bibles help us to see that it is God that is eternal. That God is a, a timeless being, is beyond space and time. He, he didn't have a beginning. He is the first uncaused cause. Lesson two, God is the creator of everything that is non-God. Now, if these lessons are helpful to you, then please hit the like button so that this video can be spread to more people who can also be helped by it. Also, if you want to know more about science and how it relates to God and the various interpretations of the first chapters of Genesis and the creation story in general, then please click the link up above and you'll be able to listen to one of my audio sermons on Genesis 1. But in the meantime, here we understand that there is a distinction between the Creator and between the creature. So everything in the universe, apart from God, is finally dependent upon Him. So there's no th hint of pantheism here, that the universe is, is made out of God. This section of scripture tells us that He created absolutely everything. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, verse 1 says. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God is spirit, and as spirit, He is separated from the world. He's pictured as, as hovering over it. Many of the old re religions, they, they worship the sun, but here's the God who made the sun according to Genesis 1. He made the sun and he defined its function as a light bearer. God is, is dis distinct from his creation. And like a poet, he, he creates the world by the power of his words. Look at verse 3. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Now, if you read all of chapter 1, you'll notice that God speaks and He wills His creation into existence. Let there be light, and there was light. You know, my words, they don't carry that kind of power. I tell my kids, hey, let this room be cleaned, and absolutely nothing happens. But God, on the other hand, He speaks and creation bursts onto the scene. Every atom, every cell, it comes about through one creative phrase, let there be. There's no hint of dualism in this passage either. That is, there's no hint of the belief that there are two separate entities of, of good and evil which are equally powerful. No, it just says, in the beginning, God. Notice that there's no hint of polytheism here. No question of God's plural at work. No, this God acts alone. He is the sole creator. Lastly, lesson three, God is personally involved with his creation. You see, there's also no hint of any kind of Olympian detachment. God is personally involved. He, he speaks, he sees, he, he, he gives names, he evaluates, he blesses, he takes pleasure in his creation. He is personally involved. In verse 28 of chapter 1, you, you see that he's addressing the, the humans that he creates and he actually commands them. Verse 28, 
And God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. I mean, just think about that. This God personally created you. And it's not simply that God was involved in, in your creation, but he's personally involved in mankind's salvation. You see, the God of Genesis 1 came down 2,000 years ago and lived amongst his creation. Look with me at Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. It reads this way, For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he's before all things, verse 17 says, and in him all things hold together. Paul says, the one that is created at all is Jesus. Jesus is the God of Genesis 1. Colossians 1 is in agreement with every one of our points that we've made from Genesis. Firstly, Jesus existed before creation. Verse 17, he's before all things. You see, there's never been a time in which God the Son did not exist. He's co-eternal, co-equal with God the Father and God the Spirit. Secondly, we understand that Jesus is the creator God, that, that all things were created by him. Thirdly, he's personally involved in his creation. He's, he personally is sustaining his creation. In him, all things hold together. Scientist Martin Rees wrote a book called Just Six Numbers. And he argues that the nature of our universe is remarkably sensitive to just six numbers, constant values that describe and define everything from the way atoms are held together to the amount of matter in our universe. And if any of these values was untuned, there would be no life as we know it in our current universe. The science behind this is related to just six numbers. But the mind behind the science is Jesus. You know, the original question that we were answering is, does God exist? Where for all of you genuine inquirers out there, this passage answers the question that you sometimes look up into the stars at night and ask, Why am I here? Why have I been created? Well, the Bible helps us to see that we are created for Jesus. Your life is not without meaning. It's not without purpose. Time plus matter plus chance has not produced your brain. You are absolutely purposeful. You are no accident. You were created for Him. Well, thank you so much. God bless you in the way.